Originally, there was an observatory uh, just north of the city of Toronto called the David Dunlap Observatory. It was built in the 1930s. It was uh, operational shortly after that. And it was used as a research telescope for the University of Toronto. And it did a lot of interesting research, but what happened is over time, the city grew around it and there was a lot of light pollution. And of course, uh, there were larger telescopes built elsewhere. Uh, that Canada had access to. When the observatory site was no longer competitive, the Dunlap Institute was created to continue that legacy of doing novel research and developing novel techniques and building new astronomical instruments that could revolutionize astronomy. The Dunlap Institute has quite a lot of different people working in different parts of cosmology, largely focused on how we can use big surveys to answer fundamental questions about the universe. One of the things that I'm involved in is the Rubin Observatory. A few years ago, they opened it up to some international partners. They said, uh, come up with a proposal for in-kind contributions. So we have um, come up with a proposal that combines both um, postdoc and software support that we'll provide to Rubin, but also we are in the process of trying to build a data center that will host and process computational data from Rubin. Rubin then responded and said, well, this in-kind proposal can actually give you data rights for many more Canadians. So at the moment, it's over 200 Canadians that will get access to Rubin data because of this in-kind contribution. Dark energy and uh, the study of the large-scale structure of the universe are two of the main research topics here at Dunlap. And CHIME is a specialized instrument that, that we build for that specific purpose, right? It's just that we use hydrogen intensity mapping, where instead of observing individual galaxies, we, meet, we measure the aggregated emission from many galaxies, and that allows us to map the universe really, really fast. Early during this construction, we realized that in addition to its main purpose of studying dark energy, it will be a great instrument to study the radio transient sky. So we built a specialized backend to detect highly dispersed transients like FRBs in real time. By the time we turned on the CHIME telescope, we detected like 13 during the first few weeks. Well, it took about a decade to detect the first 50 without telescopes in the world. CORE will be an instrument that'll be about an order of magnitude more powerful than CHIME, and we're building it from the ground up for two things. One is to be more robust to systematics, and the other is to have a correlator that is more flexible to allow a broader range of science that not only includes 21st century cosmology and FRB search and localization, but also pulsar timing, cosmic magnetism, and its low transients. My work here at the Dunlap Institute focuses on the study of star-forming regions, especially the ones that are close in our universe. So the, the closest galaxies to the Milky Way contain multiple star-forming regions, thousands of them actually. And they are in different environment. Um, some of them are metal poor or metal rich. And as they form, they are actually different. They form different stars. And my research tends to understanding why they are so different. This is embedded in our understanding of the evolution of the whole universe. Because if we go back in time, the universe was more metal poor. And nowadays, we find more metal rich regions. When we're looking at star formation, we're trying to understand how this process impact the evolution of our universe. Targeting the beginning of the universe or targeting the nearby universe require a really different set of instruments that look at different band of the light. To capitalize that, we're building a new instrument called the Gemini Infrared Multi-Object Spectrograph, which is going to be a major facility available at the Gemini Telescope. In addition to carrying out these major research projects, uh, one of the other key areas the Institute is very committed to is in public outreach and communications. Astronomy on Tap is for adult members of the public who already have a mild interest in astronomy. It's great for raising visibility uh, of new astronomy projects and research uh, to the public and sort of seeing what it is that astronomers do in their day-to-day -day life. I think it's really important to sort of bring visibility of what we're doing uh, as a research field just to everyone. 
I envision the Dunlop Institute uh, being at the forefront of technology development and discoveries in astrophysics and also being a world hub for training the next generation of astronomers that are going to lead this discovery. Training is really important. We all see it here at the Dunlap as the way that you can equip people to be productive scientists, but also just critical thinkers. We have the Dunlap Fellowship Program where um, we can fund postdoctoral fellows to work on whatever they want within the Dunlap Institute. We really are trying to be strategic in the way that we train and mentor our postdocs and students. We're trying to capitalize these growing astronomical research fields like transients, supernovae, studying fast radio bursts. And one of the other areas that we're looking forward to is space uh, astronomy and instrumentation. But the barrier to entry to space is a lot less now and will continue to get even lower going forward. I really think that there's a lot of people here who have a lot of ambition and passion in different areas. And it's really exciting to know that like, any dream that I have, it's not off the table.